of Solomon, Wimbo Uliobora, chapter 2, verse number 15. The Bible says, Catch for us the foxes, the little foxes that ruin the vineyards, our vineyards that are in bloom. Nasema kwamba tukamate wale mbwea wadogo wayaripio mizabibu. Mana mizabibu yetu ya chanua. Another translation says catch for us, catch us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines for our vines have tender grapes. Tasiri ngini nasema kwamba tukamate wale mbwea wadogo ambao wanaribu mizabibu mana tayari Precious Father, thank you for the word that you have sent to us this night. We ask that the Spirit of the Lord will open our understanding to get to know what you are speaking to us at, at a time like this. Bless every hearer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to talk on the topic destroy the little foxes within the family. Nataka nizungumzie ujumbe ambaye nimepea na mada tuangamize wale ambao wadogo wanaovuruga familia zetu destroy the little foxes within the family waangamize wale ambao wadogo walioko katika familia zetu the joy of the lord is to see a flourishing family fraya bwana ni kuona familia zinazonawiri one of the covenant uh, commands that God gave right in the book of Genesis, he says, let's create man in our own likeness, in our image, and uh, let them have dominion, and let them be fruitful and subdue the earth. Na moja wapo ya amri ilio tolewa katika apo mwanzo, kwenye bustani ya edeni ni kwamba tumfanye mtu kwa mfano na sula yetu wakaweze kutawala waweze kuzaana na waweze kutiisha inchi so one of the expectations of our father is that our families should blossom mmoja wapo ya tamanio la baba yetu wa mbinguni ni kwamba familia zetu zikanawiri whether you are married or not married whether you are a widow a widower or any other member of the family your destiny is to be part and parcel of the fruitfulness of that family na tamanile mungu ni kwamba haijalishi umeolewa ukaoa uliachwa ama we ni mjane tamanile mungu ni kwamba uwe sehemu ya familia inayonawiri because fruitfulness is not necessarily uh, giving birth to children alone but making the family a happy place an environment that God would desire to dwell huku kunawiri si kwamba uwe kwenye kuzaa peke yake lakini kwamba yawepo mazingira mandhari mazuri yafaayo every member of the family is a contributor to the welfare of the family. Kila mshirika wa familia anachangia manufaa ya hiyo familia. Including the babies that are born, very little toddlers in the home, they contribute to the joy of the home. Ikijumuisha hala wale wadogo wanyonyao wasioanza kuongea, lakini uwepo wao unachangamsha familia. Because that which God has uh, deposited in every human being that comes on the face of the earth is the capacity to produce something that will flourish the entire family. Yani kwamba kila mungu alichokegeza ndani ya kila moja ajaye duniani ni kwamba awa na wezo mkubo wakuchangia 
maendeleo na manufaa ya familia kwa jumla and that's how it begins everyone that comes in comes in to do exactly that but the enemy will always work against the fruitfulness and the blossoming of any family hivyo ndivyo ilivyo na kila ajaye kwenye familia amekusudia kuchangia manufaa yake lakini lengo la adui ni kuhakikisha kwamba amekata kusiwepo na kunawiri katika familia now i have read this scripture the bible says catch for us the foxes nimekusomea ndiko hili linasema tuwakamate mbwea they are little foxes wapo wale mbwea wadogo whose assignment is to ruin the vineyard ambaye kazi yao kubwa na lengo ni kuharibu mizabibu and to make sure that there is no blooming or blossoming na hakikisha kwamba hii mizabibu haichanui tena now what is a vineyard je shamba la mizabibu ni nini a vineyard is symbolic of life hiyo shamba la mizabibu linaashiria maisha it is symbolic of human heart in the sight of god shiria moyo wa mwanadamu katika mpango wa mungu the vineyard produces fruits four or five times in a year symbolizing that uh, which brings gladness and sweetness in all the seasons of life shamba la mizabibu hutoa matunda yake mara tano kwa mwaka maana yake ni kwamba haya matunda ya mizabibu yanayotengenezwa divai ni ya kufurahisha kuburudisha maisha ya watu bible says in isaiah chapter 5 verse 7 bila nasema katika isaiah 5:7 He says the vineyard of the Lord Almighty is the nation of Israel. Nasema kwamba shamba la mizabibu la Bwana ni taifa la Israeli. And the people of Judah. Na wale watu wa Yuda. Are they are, are the vines he delights in. Naye wao ndio mche wa mpendezao Bwana. He looked for justice but he saw bloodshed for righteousness but he had cries of distress akatumaini kuona hukumu ya haki na kumbe akaona dhulma alitumaini kuona haki na kumbe alisikia kilio now the vineyard also symbolizes a family shamba la mizabibu linaashiria familia a nation of israel is already adopted by god as a people of god and he calls them my sons they are a family appointed as, as god's family and so he calls them my vineyard na taifa la israeli limechukuliwa na mungu kama mtoto wa mungu anaita ni mwanangu na hivyo basi kumaanisha kwamba ni shamba la mizabibu ama familia ya Mungu. So a vineyard that we are talking about we are looking at a family that God delights in as much as the enemy throws in all kinds of destructive things to tear it apart. Shamba la mizabibu ni familia ambayo Mungu anapendezwa nayo ijapo adui anafanya kila wezalo kutupa vitu vya kuangamiza mandhari mazuri ya hiyo familia ya Mungu. A vine produces grapefruits. Kwa hivyo mzabibu hutoa zabibu which produces wine. Ambao kutoka kwayo kunatolewa divai wine is a symbol of divine grace na zabibu uh, divai ni ishara ya neema ya kiungu is a symbol of joy na ni ishara ya furaha wine is a symbol of celebration divai ni ishara ya kushangilia kusherekea it is a symbol of festivity ni ishara ya sherehe 
It is an expression of God's covenant blessing. Na nidirisho la baraka za kiagano za So wine represents the uh, the blessing of God uh, that he releases in a family. Divine ashiria baraka za Mungu anazoziachilia kwa familia. Look at the family of Abraham. The Bible says Genesis 14. Tukiangalia familia ya Abrahamu mwanzo 14. Verse number 18 the Bible says then Melchizedek king of Salem brought out bread and wine. Biblia inasema ya kwamba ya kwamba yule Melchizedek akampa Ibrahimu uh, divai na mkate. He was a priest of God most high and he blessed him and he said Blessed be Abraham of God most high possessor of heaven and earth Akambariki Ibrahimu na akamwambia barikiwe Mungu aliyejuu sana muumba mbingu na wainchi And blessed be God most high who has delivered your enemies into your hand and he gave him a tithe of all Aimidiwe Mungu aliyejuu sana Aliyewatia adui zako mkononi mwako Abraham akampa fungu la kumi la vitu vyote So wine represents a divine covenant blessing Kwa hivyo divai inaashiria mibaraka za kiagano When God instituted the first marriage Mungu alipoasisi ndoa ya kwanza He blessed he was blessing them while they were in a garden full of fruits and one of the fruits in that garden was a vine tree na aliwabarikia wakiwa kwenye bustani ya edeni iliyokuwa imejawa miti ya matunda moja wapo ya miti ya matunda ilikuwa ni mzabibu when he made the first covenant of marriage he looked at a tree that produces joy, happiness, celebration, uh, festivities, and peace in the home. And that's why he blessed them in a place that was so beautiful. Alipasisi ya ndoa yao ya kwanza na family ya kwanza. Aliakikisha kwamba ukuna mti amba unatoa, fraha, amani, shere, utulivu, kusherekea. The first miracle that Jesus Christ performed. Mujiza wa kwanza ambaye Yesu Kristo aliufanya duniani. He performed that miracle in a family. Alifanya hiyo muujiza katika mazingira ya familia. It was in a genesis of a family. Ilikuwa katika muasisi ama chanzo cha familia. And the Bible says when he attended that wedding. Na Biblia inasema kwamba Yesu alipohudhuria harusi there was everything except they lacked wine. They reached the place in their celebration and the wine got finished. John 2 verse 1. On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding and when they ran out of wine the mother of Jesus said to him they have no wine. Jesus said to her woman what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. Yes, akamwambia mama tuna nini mimi na wewe saa yangu his mother said to the servants, whatever he says to you, do it. Now, there were set there six water pots of stone. According to the manner of purification of the Jews. Amba ilikuwa ni kwa de, kama desturi ya wayahudi ya kuwatawanda containing 20 or 30 gallons apiece 
na inasema kwamba kila moja ilipata kadri ya nzio mbili tatu Jesus said to them fill the water pots with water Yesu akawaambia jazeni mabalasi maji and they filled them up to the brim na wakajaza hata juu and he said to them draw some out now akawaambia sasa yatekeni mkawapelekee wakuu and take it to the master of the feast ukapelekee mkuu wa mezi and they did it wao wakapeleka when the master of the feast had had tested the water that was made wine and did not know where it came from but the servants who had drawn the water knew the master of the feast called the bridegroom and he said to him every man at the beginning of at the beginning sets out the good wine and when the guests have well drunk then they bring the inferior but you have kept the good wine until now na mkuu wa meza alipoyaona yale maji yaliyo uh, yaliyo uh, yaliyo kuwa yaliyofanyika divai wala sijui ilitoke wapi lakini watumishi walijua wale walio yateka yale maji yule mkuu wa meza akamuita bwana harusi akamwambia kila mtu kwanza huandaa divai iliyo njema hata watu wakiisha kunywa sana ndipo huleta ile dhaifu wewe umeweka divai iliyo njema hata sasa now you can see the first miracle that jesus did unaona kwamba muujiza wa kwanza aliyoufanya yesu he did it in a wedding alifanya kwenye karamu ya harusi a wedding is the gateway into a marriage na karamu ya harusi ndilo lango la kuingia kwenye ndoa what happens there determines how things should be yanayofanyika harusini itaamua kama vile vitu natakiwa viwe if there was celebration iwapo kulikuwa na sherehe people celebrated iwapo watu walifurahia people ate cake iwapo watu walikula keki people are a uh, sat well and they put on nicely and they were beautified that is how your marriage should be because you cannot beautify the gate and never have the house that is beautiful there kwa hivyo watu walikula wakafurahi wakavaa vizuri kwa hivyo harusi imepambwa mezi pamba lango na usipambe nyumba Many people beautify the gate which is just the wedding day and thereafter things begin to happen to their lives. Watu wengi hurembesha lango. Lango ni harusi. Lakini ndoa yenyewe ikawa inakasheshe. Why spend 2 million on a wedding and struggle in your family? Bona utumie milioni mbili kwenye harusi hali hamna hela kwenye ndoa and things are going to lack in that family na kwamba viwepo vitu vimepungua kwenye hiyo ndoa yenu so the first thing that jesus demonstrates to us kitu cha kwanza anatudhihirishia bwana yesu he is demonstrating to us that if we are entering the gate of marriage anatudhihirishia tunapoingia kwenye lango la ndoa there should be celebration Kuwepo na sherehe and there should be wine. Kuwepo na divai ya kuchangamsha. Because celebration without wine in those days was not a celebration. Maana karamu za siku hizo shere pasina divai basi haikukua imekamilika. Because it has a lot of symbolism concerning the family. Maana hiyo divai ina ashiria mengi na ndoa because wine is a symbol of romance mana divine ishara hiyo furaha and so when there is no wine then everything else may be good but the joy is lacking in it hmm kukokikosekana divai 
Huenda kila kitu ni sambamba lakini hamna raha. You have built a good house with nice sofa set with a 70 or 90 inch television television screen and you have the best everything in the house but if there is no joy in that house everything else loses its value nyumba umeijenga nzuri yapendeza unazo runinga kubwa kubwa makoji viti vizuri lakini hamna raha kwenye nyumba yako nzuri he may have a mercedes benz worth 22 million kenya shillings but you sit in with your wife and you never talk a word because you quarrel in the bed you quarrel in the kitchen you quarrel in the sitting room you quarrel as you come out you quarrel in the car so it doesn't matter that 22 million vehicle is valueless unaweza kuwa na mercedes ya shilingi milioni 22 za kenya ili hali unapoingia kule na mkeo hamzungumzi maana magombano kitandani magombano jikoni magombano sabuleni magombano kwenye mercedes value of marriage comes from the heart of celebrating each other thamani ya ndoa inatokana na moyo wa kusherekeana ama kudhaminiana that's where value comes from hapo ndipo thamani yake inatoka so when jesus initiates this wedding wakati yesu kristo anaasisi hii ndoa ya kana ya galilaya probably many people didn't know him at that time na huenda watu wengi hawakukua wamemtambua siku hizo but he came with his mother lakini akaja pamoja na mamake and the mother introduced him to a few of the people that were there as servants ah mamake akamtanguli akamtambulisha yesu kwa waliokuepo kama watumishi mothers are observant wamama wanakuanga makinifu na mambo they looked around in this wedding they saw a lot of pochopochos without wine waliangalia wa kwenye harusi kuna mapochopocho lakini divai imesha she came to jesus akamjia yesu and say to jesus akamwambia yesu they have no wine apa hawana divai you can go to a house you see every good thing you admire everything mm unaweza ingia kwenye nyumba viapendeza kila kitu chapendeza but if there's no wine you will know there's no one here apa kama kuna divai utasikia hewa haingi look at two people and tell them please restore wine in your house angalia watu wawili waambia kwamba bwana Leta divai nyumbani. Let there be wine, celebration, mm. joy, kuwa na sherehe, peace, raha, amani. Let your home be the most admirable place in your heart. Mm. Wacha nyumbani kwako pale mali panatamanika sana katika moyo wako. If you uh, admire to stay elsewhere or in another person's house other than your own house is a trouble in that house eh iwapo wewe unafurahia ukiwa kwingine ama kwa mtu mwingine na nyumbani utaki ujue kuna shida if you enjoy staying in the office more than your house there is a problem mhm ikiwa unastareeka ukiwa ofisini kuliko nyumbani nyumbani kuna shida mtu wangu don't take wine outside we divai usikunywe kule nje Take your wine in your house. Peleka divai nyumbani kwako. I want you to understand I'm not talking about physical wine. Ah ah, nataka uelewe. Usisema Skufa ameturuhusu tulete hiyo vitu zingine watu wanalewaga. I'm not talking about physical wine. Siongelele hiyo kitu ya duka hiyo. I'm talking about the spiritual wine. Naongelelea divai ya kiroho which is generated from a lifestyle amba inatokana na hali na mtindo wa maisha a lifestyle determined developed to make sure that you enjoy life with the husband of your youth and you enjoy life with the wife of your youth yani umekuza mtindo na hali ya maisha 
Unafraya fra na mkeo na mumeo. So you need to know that it is the will of God for you to enjoy this life. Nataka uelewe ni mapenzi ya Mungu ufurahie hiyo maisha bwana. So look at somebody and tell them it is not a problem for you to enjoy. God wants you to enjoy good life. Hmm. Mungu anataka ufurahie maisha bwana. So when Jesus brought in a miracle wine which was not physical it never came from a tree it never came from any fruit it came from heaven Yesu alipoleta divai ya kimiujiza haikutokana na mambo ya asili haikutoka kwa miti wala matunda wala dukani This was a spiritual wine Hii ilikuwa ni divai ya kiroho but converted into substance that could be seen na ikabadilishwa kwa kitu tunachoweza kuona the bible says when they tested the wine bila sema walipooja ile divai it was better than what they had taken earlier ilikuwa ni bora kuliko ile ya kwanza it is my prayer this service in this service and this week that you will have a fresh wine in your family naomba wiki hii kuanzia wiki hii upate divai mpya ndani ya nyumba yako a wine you can never get from any other place mm, divai ambayo hautaipata kwingineko when the master of ceremony tested it yule mkuu wa sherehe alipoionja he couldn't distribute it angeweza kuigawa he had to come to the owner of the party akamchia mwenye sherehe and he says hey man what is happening here akamuliza kwani kumeendaje hapa and the man said what is it akamuliza kwani kuna nini he said have you tested this wine we hii kitu umeonja hii yenye umeleta saa hii he gave it to him to test akampaonja hii kitu it was something out of nowhere kilikuwa kitu akijawai onekana they had never seen anything like it haikukuwa imewahi kuonekana and everybody marveled kila mtu akastaja he told him my friend kumwambia rafiki bwana why should you keep the best till the last utawekaje bora mpaka mwisho and uh, this man didn't even know where it came from na huyo mtu pia hana habari ilitoka listen to me Nisikizi. what god is about to do in your house kila ambacho mungu atatenda kwa nyumba yako will remain sweet to the end kitasalia kitamu tamu siku zote i say your wife will be sweet to the end mke wako atakuwa mtu your husband will be sweet to the end eh hey, mumeo atakuwa msweet mpaka mwisho stop calling somebody sweetheart when they are bitter hearts wacha kuita watu wengine ni sweet na ni machungu Your husband should be sweet all their lives. Mme wako awe mtamu siku zote. Lift up your hand and shout my marriage shall remain sweet. Inua mkono sema ndoa yangu itasalia tamu. Ah, I didn't hear you. Lift it higher up and shout my marriage mm. shall remain sweet. Sema ndoa yangu itasalia tamu. Because the wine is fresh all the time. Maana divai hii ni mpya kila siku. The wine in our relationship is strong every time. Divai yetu kwenye uhusiano wetu ni thabiti kila wakati. God wants your marriage to be happy all the time Mungu anataka ndoa yako ijawe na furaha siku zote But there are things the enemy drops there that are called little foxes Lakini kuna vitu adui huviangusha pale vinaitwa mbwa wadogo That makes the bloom of your wine or your vibe, your grapes not to come out Amba inazuilia mizabibu isichanue Because if you don't have grapes then you don't have wine Osipokuwa na matunda za bibu hauna divai so the devil will want to cut short your joy from a source adui atajaribu kukata furaha yako kutoka katika vyanzo vyake but god is going to arrest this thing lakini mungu atawakamata hawa mbwea hao in the name of jesus katika jina la yesu i say in the name of jesus katika jina la yesu Your family should enjoy good good time all the time. Family yako iwe na furaha siku zote.
Ask a friend, is that what is happening in your family? Muuliza jirani hiyo kitu anasema hapo na ionanga huko kwako. Now, let me digress a little bit. Kidogo niende kando. One thing that we need to know is that life is never lived in a straight line. Maisha huwezi kuyaishi tu kila kitu ni nywe. There are things that will continue to try and distract you or cause issues that are not going to be pleasant in your lives. Kuna mambo ambayo huzuka ikijaribu kukuondoa ili usiende na mkondo ulio sahihi. That's why it is important to know that family relationships always undergoes various life cycles. Nataka tuelewe kwamba familia huwa yanapitia misunguko mbalimbali ama hatua mbalimbali. They are like metamorphosis. Ni kama vile viwango vya kubadilika badilika kama kwa mdudu. You see if you look at a lifestyle of a butterfly. Ungeangalia maisha na msururu wa maisha wa kipepeo. There are several stages into maturity wanapitia hatua nyingi hatua nne ndio wakomae the egg the larva the pupa then adult wanatokea niai alafu kale kamdudu kadogo alafu kuna kitu kama dumadi so when you see it in the egg stage there's nothing admirable about it ukimuona akiwa yai hamna cha kutamani you see it as a lover you will run away from it Ukimwona amefana akiwa kiwavi anakuwa hata ana sura. You will many children will run away from it. Wengi watoto watatoroka yule dudu manyoya. And even some of us. Una wengi wetu eh, you would not want to touch it you don't want to you, you get scared about. Utaki kuchika yule dudu manyoya na ni kipepeo. Because it doesn't look like any anything beautiful can come out of this thing akai kufanana kwamba urembo unaweza toka hapo then when it comes to pupa it is is in a dormant stage you don't even know whether this thing is dead or alive inafika ile hatua anakaa kama alikufa but it is in a process of development lakini imo kwenye mchakato wa kuukuaji and if it survives the egg stage and survives the larva stage and survives the stage of pupa this butterfly will eventually come out so beautiful that even children will be running to try and catch it mm. and men will be taking photographs i mean it looks nice and beautiful and it is so gracious. Ikiwa itapita hatua ya kwanza ya yai, hatua ya ya ile dudu and then dudu manyoya na inakaa hali ya kukufa, ikafika kiwango cha kipepeo. Picha tunapiga picha, watoto wanakimbilia, hawatoroki dudu manyoya tena. If you find that thing in a pupa and maybe you see it struggling to come out of that pupa into now an adult, you may sympathize with it. But if you try to pull it by yourself you kill it. Ukiipata kwenye ikiwa kwenye hiyo hatua ya iko ndani ya gasha lake na inajaribu kutoka ndani ya hilo gasha ukijaribu kuivuta kutoa nje mapema utaiua. The beauty of any family relationship. Urembo ama fahari ya mahusiano yoyote ya kindoa. The glory of any family relationship utukufu wa mahusiano yote ya kifamilia must endure the stages of development and the process through which that family has to go through to develop into a glorious family lazima istahimili haya mapito yote ya magumu na mchakato mzima ambalo lazima ipitie ndio ikamilike and because of lack of knowledge or people want to uh, maybe uh, speed up the process they kill the process 
and they kill the future. Lakini kwa sababu watu na pupa yao na haraka yao wanataka wafanye kila kitu kimakrof. Kwa njia hiyo wanaharibu na kuua kitu ambacho kilikuwa kinajengeka kiwe kizuri. So there are characteristics that you need to develop as you are growing in relationships. Kwa hivyo kuna tabia fulani unahitaji ujenge ama ukuze wakati unaendelea kukua katika mahusiano ya kifamilia. Marriage life for example and family by extension will always go through challenges. Maisha ya ndoa ambayo ni familia itapitia changamoto na mapito mbalimbali. For example a marriage relationship to reach its maturity where glory and joy now begins to manifest and that you are able to sustain that marriage for the next 50 years celebrating your jubilee together as a married couple you have experienced a lot of hills and valleys ili ndoa kwamba imeweza kukomaa ifikie kiwango kwamba inaweza stahimili miaka hamsini ya yubili na kusherekea kwa pamoja lazima utastahimili mapito milima na mabonde because it begins with an idea you look at that man and you say i wish that could be my husband na inaanza na wazo unamwangalia mtu huyu ah anaweza kuwa me wangu then it goes into the romance part of it inaingia mahali sasa mapenzi imepanda which ends into probably marriage ambaye labda itaishia ndoa a glorious wedding takes place harusi yenye fahari kubwa inatendeka the world knows about it ulimwengu unajua habari zake pictures are taken picha zinachukuliwa and we put it on instagram tunaziweka kwenye mitandao the whole world knows kila ulimwengu najua that sister so and so has gotten ah dada yamepatwa and uh, things are happening in that life na kuna vitu vinafanyika kwa maisha yake we will go for honeymoon tutaenda fungate and uh, swim together na tuogelee pamoja and drink from one fanta bottle tukunywe soda kwenye chupa moja ya fanta and share one cake na tukule keki moja tukiumania i mean life is good maisha ni nywe others look at you and they say i wish i got a husband like that one mwingine akikona anasema ai na mimi nitapata wangu lini they look at their own husband and they say my god i made a big mistake na wengine wanaona waangalia wako wanasema ni nyang'awa nilitoa wapi <laughs> the other man looks at this beautiful girl that has been beautified by romance. Alafu mwanamume mwingine anaona yule msichana amepambwa na mume wake kwa sababu anampenda. Anasema we he says I think I got married too early I didn't think properly. Ni kama sikuona vizuri mbona niliharakisha hii kitu. So this joy and bliss and celebration and going out and eating together and sharing life and i mean things are just beautiful mafraya majivinjari matembea pamoja mala pamoja kila kitu cha fanana but that's one stage hiyo nayo ni hatua tu katika hatua zote it will never be like that forever Hiyo haitakaa hapo milele. Life is not about feelings. <laughs> Maisha sio tu maisia isia. The honey in the moon dries. Asali ndani ya mwezi ufika ikakauka kama hakuna nyuki. <laughs> Praise God. Bwana <laughs> zivue. I say the honey in the moon can dry. Nasema ile asali yenye kwa mwezi itakauka. Marriage may I inform you to Ali. Marriage is not about feelings. Ni kwa ni kuarefisha mapema. Ndoa hii si ya mahisia tu. 
Hiyo maancha ni ya muda. Itaisha na itakauka. Bwana pewe sifa. Amen. People say I must get married because I love him. Wengine wanasema nitamuoa maana nampenda. Amnon. No, is, what is his name? Amnon, yes. Amnon. Yeah. Amnon loved the sister to death. Amnoni alimpenda dada yake anasikia kukufa yani. Until he, be, he pretended to be sick. Mpaka akajifanya mgonjwa. He loved her. Alimpenda. Ai, my brother. <laughs> But the day he slept with her he hated her like death siku alilala naye akamchukia kama kufa the feelings the infatuations mm. can lie to you because love is more than feelings maana upendo unapita hizo mahanja mna mahisia very many people have ended up with bitter feelings and bitter lives because they thought they loved the man or the man thought loved the woman and the moment they slept together the man eventually terribly hated that girl and she begins to wonder i loved him why did he behave like that it was hmm. not love it was lust yeah. watu wanaishia na uchungu wa moyo kwa sababu ya kuumizwa walivyodhani mtu huyu aliwapenda aliposema amewapenda lakini ikawa alipola na wao hakuwapenda tena huyu akasikia ana uchungu ameumwa there is another stage that comes after the romance kuna hatua ama kituo kingine kinafikia tukishatoka mahali pa mahanja where you have so much expectations and those expectations are never met mali ambapo ulikuwa na matarajio makubwa sana na mwenzio lakini huyaoni aketimizwa you looked at him you thought he was rich only to discover that the clothes that he was wearing were belonging to his brother mm ulimdhani kwamba huyu mtu ni tajiri na kumba nguo alikuwa kizibalia ni za ndugu yake you saw him with a car and you thought this man must be having beautiful life and may, may be having a lot of money only to discover that that car he rented it for that season. Hmm. Ulimuona akiwa na gari ila alikuwa akikutembezea ndani, ukadhani ndio sasa umepata. Baadaye likarudishiwa mwenyewe maana alikodisha hilo gari. He's driving a rental car. Wah. Aliendesha gari la kukodishwa. He takes you to his brother's house. Alikupele anakupeleka kwa nyumba ya mama yake. And then you think this is our home. Unafikiria hii nyumba kubwa hii ni yetu. After wedding. Harusi kisha. He takes you to a one bedroom house. Anakupeleka kwa simba. And you begin to ask what 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 is this? Nisema hii ni gani ama You have entered a stage that is called delusion the delusionment umeingia mahali penye ulikuwa tu akili zimedanganywa ya kwamba ni ukweli na sio kweli reality dawns on you mm. mambo kwa ground inatokea jinsi ilivyo you discover this man that looked so holy that is no longer holy really ulitambua huyu mtu alionekana takatifu si takatifu bila You thought that this man that was speaking so sweet suddenly he, the language has changed. Huyu mtu alikuwa na maneno matamu matamu sasa si matusi. Many girls have gotten married thinking they are the only ones but the time they come they, they enter uh, into marriage they discover this man has two other wives one in Nyalugunga another one in Nyeri. Wengine waliingia kidhani wao ndio wao malikia peke yao bila kujua kuna malikia mkubwa nyalukunga malikia anayefuata ako nyeri na yeye ni malikia watatu mdogo and they have had a beautiful wedding na harusi ilikuwa imefana they never did any research hawakufanya utafiti kujua 
Please never get married on face value. Usiolewe kwa kuwa muonekano wa nje. Dig deeper before you make a commitment. Chimba, chimbua. It is a life commitment. It is not an infatuation of a simple a single night. Hii ni kitu unajitolea maisha yako yote sio majamu ya usiku mmoja. Marriage is a marathon. It is not a stint. Sikiza ndoa ni mbio za masafa marefu sio mita 100. Do a research. Fanya utafiti. A good research. Utafiti unaofaa. Even if it is your own brother who say this boy this man is my friend is good don't take him at his word he doesn't know your desires in life mm hata kama ni ndugu yako anasema wewe ni rafiki yangu ninamjua ukweli ni kwamba hata ndugu yako hajui jamaa if uh, your auntie brought this girl or brought this boy please take time to first of all study this case. Mm. Ata shangaza iwapo alikuletea huyu kijana ama msichana wewe mwenyewe jifanyie utafiti wako. Because when that stage two comes you have you have given yourself so much you have sacrificed so much you are probably pregnant with twins and now you don't know how to step out and things are not working as you expected utakapoingia awamu ya pili hapo mambo yameshageuka una mtoto sasa bwana utafanyaje things change wewe vitu badilika so make sure that you are entering into what you have properly investigated you have done a good research don't ever be driven by desperation. Mm. Akikisha umefanya utafiti wa kutosha una uhakika. Usisukume na kuona sasa mimi nisipoeleka nitafanya nini nyingine. Eh. Yeah. Tunaelewana? Now I have to help. Lazima nikusaidie hapo. Because things are happening in the world today that are messing up many, very many young people. Mambo inatukia duniani ambayo inawavuruga vijana wengi. Now after we finish the disillusionment stage tukitoka mahali hapa sasa umeamka ni kama unatoka kwa usingizi and you have reached the place and you say okay fine i want to adjust myself to this situation na sasa umefika mahali umesema sasa lazima nipambane na hali yangu kama and you have purpose in your heart i'm not jumping out of this marriage na umekusudia hii ndoa si itoroki because that is one stage that people break up hapo ndiyo sasa hatua watu wengi huachana. The next stage mostly becomes even more tougher. It is the stage of power struggle. Inakuwa mali penye sasa ni mungangano nani ndio nani. Because now the woman or the man has been through the delusionment stage and they are learning to be warriors to fight for their position. Kwa hivyo sasa wametoka kwenye ndoto zao wameamka ni mapema wanataka kupigana vita watania nafasi yao. They are now wanting to position themselves so that nobody shakes them out. Wanataka wajisimamie ili mtu asiwatikize. That's where now struggles begin. Hapo ndio mivutano inaanza. The wife wants to keep her account wants to buy her property wants to buy her car the man wants to buy his own things and he's not sure whether this woman will ever stay or she's not sure this man will ever stay kwa hivyo mwanamume anataka kununua gari lake shamba lake hata mke pia afanye hivyo lakini hana uhakika na wewe mwenzi wake sijui kabisa anafichana so there is that power struggle in the family kuna ule mvutano katika familia and then when they conquer that stage kishinda hiyo awamu because it's a season of tug of war ni kipindi cha mvutano then they enter into a stage of making sure that now it is too much we have invested ni heri tusikizane 
Eh, sasa hapa lazima tupatane. Let Let's commit pameza. to live together. Itabidi tuishi pamoja mtu wangu. I have known your weaknesses. Wewe najua madhaifu yako. Things I never wanted, I have now gotten used to them. Vitu venye sikutaka itabidi nimezoea. I have tried to become my own self but it's a drug it's a struggle. Nimejijaribu kujifanya lakini haiendi. Then you decide okay fine let's be committed. Nasema eh hii lazima tutachitolea mwanzangu. Many divorces take place because people never go to the third stage. Talaka nyingi hufanyiki kwa sababu hatukufika awamu ya tatu. They give up quickly and jump out. Wanakata tamapa uma na kuruka nje. And that's why we have many divorces today. Ndiyo sababu zipo talaka nyingi leo. So purpose in your heart to maintain that relationship to the end. Azimia moyoni mwako kudumisha huo uhusiano na ndoa yako mpaka milele. That's why Jesus released the wine that was sweet to last. Ndiyo sababu Yesu akapeana divai iliyotamu wakati wa mwisho. There is If you stand strong together you don't need to go through all these stages. Mukisimama imara pamoja hamna haja kupitia awamu hizi zote. That's why we do counseling before marriage in this organization and this commission we will never do any marriage wedding or wedding uh, ceremony until we have counseled you for not less than six months. Ndiyo sababu kwenye huduma hii hatuozi watu ambao hatujawafanyia ushauri sio chini ya miezi We have experience many that have tried to sh- uh, jump the the, the 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 timelines they have ended up in disasters. Waliojaribu kuharakisha wameingilia kwenye hali ya shida. Any time you take a shortcut the, the, your life will be cut short. Ukichukua nje mikato masha yako itakatizwa marriage is not something to play around with na ndoa si ya michezo it is god's original design na ni mpango wa mungu wa kwanza and his intent was so that he may raise you may raise up a godly family na kusudio la mungu ni kwa kwamba ukaweze kulea familia ya kitab and therefore you don't enter into it and advise me let god touch you again kuguze in the name of jesus when one door closed mlango moja ukifungua is opening another door for you kufungulia wa pili when people rejected you watu walipokukata through you out of that relationship inje, let god receive you bwana kupokea he is receiving you anakupokea with all extended arms na mikono yake miwili and when god receives you anapokupokea he wipes your tears anakupanguza matoo anakupanguza chafu and the cloth you are fresh na kuvike upya and the beauty you na kurembeshe shout yes sema yeah there is a wine that makes you glad kuna divai inakuletea raha there is oil that is going to shine your face na mafuta kungarisha uso wako there is bread that god is going to bring to you na mkate atakuletea mungu to strengthen you once again ukutie nguvu tena i declare where you are weak na kutangazia mali umdhaifu get new strength akupe nguvu let Get, let God give you new strength. Mungu akikupa nguvu. Lift up your hand and shout I need this new strength. Sema nitie nguvu bwana. Beautify my face one more time. Nirembeshe uso wangu. Beautify my face one more time. Urembeshe uso wangu. Shandala mahasa. Serebe de bozia. I say to you today. Nakwambia leo. You can navigate through all these challenges of life with God because with him nothing is impossible. Unaweza pita kwenye changamoto za dunia maana Mungu akiwa upande wako hautashindwa. God is about to bind your wounds. Mungu atafunganisha jeraha zako. You are wounded in that relationship. Atakuweka kwenye uhusiano. The Bible says in the house of your friend you are wounded. Nas- katika nyumba ya rafiki yako ulijeruhiwa but Jehovah is clearing and healing your wounds lakini jehova anaponya jeraha zako whatever happened before should not determine what is about to happen in your life today kilichokufanyikia jana hakitaamua kitakachofanyika leo there is hope 
Lipo tumaini. I declare to you there is hope. Na kwambia lipo tumaini. Shout there is hope. Lipo tumaini. Shout there is hope. Una tumaini. Jeremiah chapter 30. Jeremiah 13. The Bible says. Biblia inasema. There is hope. Lipo tumaini. Lift up your voice again and shout there is hope. Lipo tumaini. Glory to Jesus. Utukufu kwa Yesu. Listen, verse 16 the Bible says therefore all those who devour you mm. shall become a devourer. I mean they shall be waliokukula wewe wataliwa. All those who are adversary. Wale maadui zako wote. Every one of them they shall go into captivity. Those who plundered your life, they shall become a plunder. And all who prayed upon you, I, God says, I will make them a prey. Those who prayed against you, Lying to you, cheating you, deceiving you, God is going to repay them if they don't repent. Wale walio kuhada, walio kutapeli, walio kuumiza, wasipotubu, ata walipisha mungu. Shout hallelujah. Sema hallelujah. It doesn't matter whether they went to the witchcraft or sorcerers or they went to covenants against your life. I declare this week is your week of liberty. Amen. Hata kama walikuendea kwa waganga na uchawi na urogi wiki unapata ushindi wangu. They stole from you. They ate your energy. They devoured you. You sacrificed too much and they threw you out. God is going to make them to be devoured as well. If they Wali kukula. Wali kunyanyaza. Walikula vyako wakishamaliza wakakutupa nje watalipa Mungu atafanya walipe those who sat in council against you conspiring evil against your marriage against your relationship against every effort you have made in life and you have been with God all this time with a clean heart God is going to turn your adversaries into captivity Walio kukalia kwenye vikao wakapanga njama wakakuvuruga umeangaika umesumbuka Mungu anawapeleka matekani <laughs> It is your season of restoration Ni majira yako ya kurejeshwa I declare to you you are stepping into an extraordinary restoration by the hand of God. Na kutangazia unaingia mahali pa marejesho makubwa kwa mkono wa Jehovah. For he says in verse 17, I will restore health to you. 17 nitakurejeshea afya and I will heal you of your wounds. Nitakuponya Jeraha zako zote. I declare healing upon your heart. Na kutangazia uponyaji jemu ya pain you have undergone. Kila maumivu umepitia. May healing begin. Uponyaji ukaanze. I say may healing begin. Nasema uponyaji ukaanze. In your life. Yani ya maisha yako. In the name of Jesus. Katika jina la Yesu. You are going to go over. Utavuka juu ya ikitu. You are going over this thing. Unavuka ikitu. Joy is coming. Fry na kuja kwako. Gladness and the celebration Shangwe na vigele gele zikuja Zita sikika nyumba ni kwako New songs shall be heard Nyumba mpia zita sikika In your family Kwenye familia yako Those who despised you Wili yo kudarao They'll be amazed when they see you Wata shanga I say those who despised you Wili yo kudarao They will be amazed Wata shanga When they see your face Wakio na uso wako Somebody is about to ask is he the one? Ah, is she really the one? Ni yeye kweli. 
Is she really the one? Something new is about to happen. In the name of Jesus. Jump on your feet. Lift up your hands. And declare your restoration. I say jump on your feet. Lift up your voice. Declare your restoration. Declare your healing. In the name of Jesus. Whatever the devil intended. We are reversing it now. In the name of Jesus. I say it is being reversed. I can't hear you pray. Come on, pray. It is only you who knows your position. It is you who knows your pain. It is you who knows what the enemy has done. Anything that was stolen from you is going to be restored. Chochote kilichukuliwa kwako kinarudishwa. Shalabaka ya la babosa. Zikada babosa da. Ikezeta la mamosa. Rete li baba babosa. Shikada babosa. Ikezeta da la mahande rebesa. Zekete li baba babosa. Ikezeta da la mahande rebesa. Come on, pray. Go for it. Omba, omba, omba. Go for it. Go for it. Heaven is remembering your good works. In the name of Jesus. Katika jina les yakaya robo sata ya shiemere bo saka ipretenda la mo zoto zola zika dada baba babo shaka yake zota ri babo shaka zika tala baba saya we exalt you Jesus yes we to to na kuinu abana we exalt you Lord Jesus to kuinu abana we to yes was the healing sipa zamo yo wa. Nakwa budu uli ni umbani kwa budu Nakwa budu E Mungu wangu Nakwa budu Yesu washta hili washta hili Sifa za moyo wangu na kwa budu uliniumba ni kwa budu na kwa budu e Mungu wangu na kwa budu Yesu Was the healing? Was the healing? Sifa zamoyo wa na kwa budu uli ni umbani kwa budu na kwa budu e mungu wa. Lift up your hands let me pray for you. Precious Father in the name of Jesus. I thank you because you are a God who sees the end from the beginning. And I bring this your children into their hands. You know each one of them by need and by name. Wajua kila moja kwa jina. And the, the, the journey they have gone through life. Every secret thing that happened to their lives. Every evil plans and conspiracies that have taken place around them. Discouragements and all kinds of spirits that have worked to frustrate their lives. Kila kukunji kamoe na rozi na shinda na nao kwa shinda. Every little fox that have been destroying their fruitfulness. Na wale mbwe wa dogo mbao meusika na paribu nizabiku. Right now in the name of Jesus. 
We arrest them. We destroy them. We uproot it. Every inventing spirit in the lives of the people of God, every deceptive power, lying spirits that is entering to bring deception in their minds, in their lives, in their bodies, sickness and disease. Maronas tormenting spirits of poverty. Rosa I break your power. Come out of this family. Every spirit of anger, quarreling, bad habits, I break it now. Where in the mighty name of Jesus? Lord, I pray healing and restoration. Let the spirit of the living God find a place of dwelling in their lives. Everybody lift your hands and just thank the Lord. Appreciate him for his goodness. Jesus, we thank you. We magnify you. In Jesus' name. Katika jina la Yesu. Amen. Clap your hands. Amen. Glory to God. We may be seated. Basi tunaweza kuketi. It's offering time. Ni wakati wa sadaka. Is a time for us to dedicate our lives, our families to God. Ni wakati wetu kuweka wakfu familia zetu na ndoa zetu kwa Mungu. Take out a good offering. God loves cheerful givers. You need to give hilariously. You need to give joyfully. You need to give with expectation. Na ukiwa na matarajio. Don't give God change, give God the best. Usimpe Mungu masalio, mpe bana yako bora. We have a pay bill right there on the screen. Na iwapo unayo kwenye simu, tuna namba yetu ya pay bill. Please use that pay bill that is on the screen already. Kwa hivyo tumia ile yenyeko kwenye Glory to the name of Rubinka. Jesus. Tukufu kwa Yesu. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Jina la Yesu litukuzwe. Kala ba shitiri bekesai. Oh hallelujah. Amen. Lift up your offering to the Lord. Mwenulia bana. Precious Father in the name that is above every name. Aboito mbinguni kwa jina la Thank you for speaking to us. Sante kwa kunena nasi. You said where your where our hearts are that's where our treasures are. We are placing our treasures in heaven. Because there are no modes of destroying rust in it. Whatever we are sowing has a great blessing. And so whatever we release tonight, may it carry supernatural blessing and bring back to us a great harvest in Jesus name Amen, Amen. and I said tonight we're going to find out whether the devil that you serve that I serve has more power we believe in the healing gospel that must be preached through high quality media production and the latest cinematic technology reaching the unreached all over the world the word taught revealed expanded expounded and embedded deep into the heart of mankind awakens the mind to focus rightfully yes darkness cannot stand in the way of the light and the light of the world is here walk in the light and live a good life watch redeemer's voice tv available on bamba tv go tv 
stir times and digital free to air decoders and TVs. Redeemer's Voice TV, bringing the liberating truth.